Okay, so for everyone that didn't see the last podcast with me and this guy in Chiang Mai, the one and only Remy Mock, MIT graduate. I call him the genius digital nomad. We had a podcast back in Chiang Mai. We were in a cafe together and he kind of talked about his story. So if you want to know more about his background, you can check that podcast. Um, but here we are to talk about Bitcoin and investing. Remy hit me up the other day. He's like, yo, your audience would love to hear about some basics in Bitcoin, some basics in online investing. And I was like, yes, I definitely need to talk more about that on this channel. So the one and only Remy Mock, also freaking uh, swimmer, swimmer fanatic, uh, gymnastics, uh, swimming champion, all that stuff that he is. Check out his Instagram. It's very interesting. Traveling the world constantly ever since he quit his Wall Street job to become a uh, online location independent entrepreneur. So what's up, Remy? Where, where are you right now and, and what's good? Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm currently in Canada, just uh, home for a few months. Got to see my family and friends. And so peaceful here, so it's uh, it's nice to uh, be productive. Yes, awesome. Uh, so he's coming from Vancouver, no Victoria, which is very close to Vancouver, very close to Seattle too, where I'm I'm from. So, yeah. So uh, to get right into it, tell people like, ever since you kind of quit your your Wall Street life. Um, what have you been working on online in the last podcast? We talked about you're doing investing, you're doing e-commerce. So what have you been up to lately and what are you doing now? Sure. Uh, yeah. So when I, when I first started traveling and, and working, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was a data scientist and also I was, uh, on the side, I was doing uh, a drop shipping and I was doing e-commerce as well. Uh, and the product I was, I got into it last December was, uh, was fidget spinners. Oh, so get I, out. <laughs> Yeah, so, Props, so, man. you got in last December yeah yeah so I mean, it was, it was a, a very good time to get in for sure I mean when, when I first saw it I didn't know what it was but uh my uh, my sister's ex-boyfriend was like you know upstairs in the living room playing with with, with this thing and I was like what the hell is this and he was telling me how it was just some toy that is his brother made with a 3d uh printer that he had at home mm. and then it was like, really addictive and he couldn't stop playing with it uh, and then some other kids kept playing with it too. I mean, these guys are all like, you know, t like, you know, 16 to 20 or whatever. Not, not the, not like the 10 year old you would expect to, to be playing with it. But I mean, yeah, I guess it's addictive for, for everyone. Uh, yeah. That was quite the craze. Yeah. But I was, I was curious, you know, like, oh, I wonder if anyone's sell, selling this on online or whatever. Uh, and I think someone, there was only like one listing on Amazon. It was for like 20 bucks and had like very little reviews, but the ranking was high. But, um, and I was like, okay, let's see how much it costs on like Alibaba or whatever. And it was like four bucks or three bucks back then. And it was a small product. It was just, it was like the perfect drop shipping product. Right. Mm. So I, yeah. So, so I started getting into that and I opened up a, a Shopify, uh, website. Yeah. I mean that, that did really well till about July and then it just kind of, you know, it, it was a fad. So it kind of wore off, but yeah. Interesting. So you were doing the drop shipping through AliExpress and Shopify? Yeah, I was using Oberlo, um, just a standard. And then I had four uh, Filipino VAs um, that were that helping with the customer service, uh, fulfilling. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, why didn't, I'm curious, why didn't you go the private label route and just buy in bulk and ship it to Amazon FBA? Uh, I don't, it just seemed like a lot more work. I think the, the drop, it's like drop shipping is, it's a lot safer, you know, because you, uh, you don't have to fork, fork that cash up front. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, if, imagine if I got overconfident in like May or June, like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to buy, you know, 30,000 fidget spinners and I'm going to do this Amazon FBA thing or whatever. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people got screwed over like this. They, they bought a lot right at the, at the peak mm -hmm. of the fidget spinner. And then they got stuck with a lot of the fidget spinners. Yeah, exactly. I know. Uh, yeah. I've, I've seen a few fidget spinners. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, and then actually, I went to uh, I went to China in uh, in May to Shenzhen, and there were oh. fidget spinners with everything. I see, like I saw boxes and boxes of them. It was, it was out of control. Oh yeah, man! I can imagine a few people. I wonder, I wonder what happened. Yo, yo, doors open. Sorry. 
Uh, anyways, continue. Yeah, fidget spinners. Okay, so after after July, after your drop shipping, what else were you uh, involved in? Uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, just, just when I was you know trying to figure out like, what the, the the next thing I should be uh, you know I should be doing. Uh, you know, I, I heard about cryptocurrencies maybe in May. I heard about it in China first. There's some guy in the hostel, uh, some yeah. Irish guy or Scottish guy was uh was talking about cryptocurrencies. Okay. Uh, Awesome, yeah. freaking hostile. Well, to, to be honest, I actually bought my first Bitcoin in, in 2011, so uh -huh. like way back. Um, maybe we should start there. Okay, and that's good. That's Bitcoin. good because I had a friend that was involved back in, uh, not 2011, but I was hanging out with this kid in 2013, kind of a, a tech uh, geek kid. Uh, and he, he was like, yeah, man, I'm just going to get you a wallet right now and send you like 50 bucks in Bitcoin. Just like, yeah. here you go, dude. Trust me. Yeah. You do it? You accept that Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah, I did. But I don't know where that, that wallet is or that address is. I got to hit him up. Uh, and I just texted him the other day. I was like, dude, how rich are you in Bitcoin right now? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, how did you get 2011? That's like, it existed then? Yeah, yeah. So, so Bitcoin was founded in like 2009 yeah. by some, some anonymous people. Uh, either a single person or a team. But uh, yeah, I first heard about it in 2011 because in my dorm uh, at MIT, there's this one guy who was trying to start like a Bitcoin startup. His idea was to make like physical, like debit, not like, like, a, like a gift card with Bitcoin in it. And he called it BitBills. Uh, so I, I actually, what I did was I, like, I, he was telling me about what Bitcoin was and I saw the price of it that day, it was like six bucks. You know, and then he showed me, oh, yeah, yesterday was four bucks or whatever. And then I, I come back the next day to his room and it shows me Bitcoin was eight bucks or something. You know, I was like, it's, it went up 25% in that day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to buy a few, like, like whatever. Um, and I don't think I even had any money back then. I was still a freshman. I didn't, wasn't working or anything. You know, I was just a student. So I just went, went to the ATM, took a bit of my parents' money, you know, hoping they won't get mad or anything. And I bought like, I bought 10 Bitcoins back then. Whoa, uh, okay. Bucks. Yeah. So do you still have those? I, unfortunately, I sold them uh, a few years later. Uh, yeah, I, I, was, uh, you know, I was at some party and a few guys were talking about, you know, buying some drugs on, the, on that Silk Road website. And they're like, oh, yeah, we need to get like, we need to get X many Bitcoins. Like, oh, yeah, how much are they pop? And they were saying like, oh, maybe 45. You know, and I was, this is like a room where I was like, you know, I was doing my work. I overheard that $45 of Bitcoin. I was like, wait, it's, it's like 45 now? You know, because I bought it at eight, so it, it went up like seven x um, since I bought it. Yeah, I guess it's not a lot of money. It's only like five, six hundred bucks. But back then, that was that was like it was a lot. You know, I was happy about that. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, it went up to like two hundred thirty, and then it crashed. And like, during the crash, I I I, uh, I sold all of them. I guess I was I was just nineteen. You know, I didn't know any better, so I sold them at like one thirty or something, one thirty five. Mm. So that was the story of my ten bitcoins. Uh, Wow. Interesting. So for people that, uh, don't know, Bitcoin is over 10,000 uh, us dollars worth. So if, if you had, if Remy had held on long term or held on just for six years to all of his Bitcoin, he would have a uh, hundred thousand dollars plus. Uh, so no, it'd, be, it'd be about 200,000 now. Cause yeah. you know, I'm not sure if you know, about I'm, the, the I'm, I'm underestimating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's like these Bitcoin forks. So now there's like Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash and a few other um, forks and they're all worth some money. So yeah, mm -hmm. it would have been like $200,000 if I, if I kept yeah. it. Um, what it could have, should have, you know, you can't, can't get yeah, down yeah. on yourself. Um, I'm just getting in now, which is why I wanted to do this podcast today. This was a last minute thing and I'm actually just getting in it now. Um, so how, how involved are you in now? Uh, I guess establish your credibility a little bit. Um, how, how long have you been like trading and, and doing this type of thing full time? Uh, yes, I mean, I've been doing it full time pretty much since, uh, since the dropshipping business ended uh, in July or June. Um, yeah, and, and I've been doing quite well. Um, some of them, so I've been getting into the ICOs. I'm not sure if you've heard of uh, what, what they are. Yeah, the so coin ICOs. Yeah, yeah. So basically, if there's a new project that they're trying to they're trying to get funded, you pay them in uh, Ethereum or some other you know uh, well-known coin like Bitcoin or Litecoin, and then they'll give you back their uh, tokens for the project, and then that could be worth something. Yeah. Uh, 
And sometimes, you know, they'll give you the, the, the tokens of the project like r right away. Um, and then they'll be tradable in a week or something. And other times, you know, the, the project will not give you the tokens for about six months or even a year. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, if anything, I think uh, it shows like the longer you have to wait, usually the, the better ROI you'll get. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so like one of the more recent ones I did really well was this one called Icon, which is a Korean ICO. Mm. So it, the ICO was back in September. I was in like, I, I remember I was in the car, like, um, I think somewhere in Germany, I was, I was participating in the ICO. And, uh, and now they're trading for 40x the price. So if you put in $1,000 in September, now they would be $40,000, you know, just yeah. three months later. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, these, are, these gains are just unheard of, you know, you, you don't, like, in the stock market, that would never happen. Uh, yeah, yeah that, exactly. that's, that's really the beauty of all this. These, um, these these swings are just crazy with the cryptos, especially yeah. with the, the ICOs. Um, so ha like, have you done that with like dozens of ICOs or just like a handful or like put in a thousand dollars each? How do you know what are the good yeah. ones? You got to read the white paper and research the company or whatever, research the coin. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we can, I mean, this is like very, um, in depth stuff. this is like i was like my friends and i always talk about you know there's different levels like level a, to a is you know bitcoin level b is you like bought bitcoin level c is like you know you own um some other altcoins like ethereum and monero yeah you know, level yeah. d is you own like really obscure coins and then level level e is like these icos okay uh, so this is e stuff but yeah um in general the icos like you know some will make you 40x Others will make you 5x, you know, some will make you just break even and then you'll lose money on some of them, right? Obviously, it's for you to lose all your money is very, very rare, like unless like, I see it as a scam, which happens, you know, 1% of the time. And then mm -hmm. other times, maybe it's a, it's a decent project, but the demand is just not there and it drops like half in value. But yeah. when you have one ICO that does 40x, the other 39 can go to zero and you're still break even, right? And that's the beauty of this. And so you're, yeah, you're always going to do quite well. Um, as long as you're smart about where you invest, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, some of the people that I know that are really into it are now getting into the ICO level E, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, let's go back and start with level A or B. Let's start with level B. So someone that knows a lot about Bitcoin, this is, this is me. I'm level B. Like I watch tons of YouTube. I, I understand it. I know the, the value, but I haven't had a lot of sideline cash to to get in you know all my cash goes back to my amazon inventory yeah, um, yeah. but i recently got a lump of cash from my youtube ad revenue i was finally able to withdraw it or whatever so i'm like okay i got this cash on the side what can i do with that oh and everyone's like dude perfect time to get into bitcoin so someone like me who happens to have some sideline cash maybe they got some hanukkah money and they're 13 or not saying you should do that if you're 13, yeah, yeah. but, uh, you know, what should people tell people what's going right, what's going on right now in the space. And I guess what you would do if you were like 18 or something, uh, let's just say 18 and you, you got $5,000 on the sideline. What would you, what would you do? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess the first thing, one, if you don't have money, you should start, you know, like, Maybe you're spending too much money on, on you know, going out or on, on new iPhones and new clothes. Maybe you've got to live a more frugal life so you can make some, you know, save some money. Yeah. The, the key is like, you need money to make money, right? That's, I think that's like the most important rule. Because, um, yeah, if you can, you can do 10x in some coin, but if you only have 10 bucks, it only, only gets to 100, right? Yeah. But if you have 1,000 bucks and does 10x, and now you have $10,000. So the power comes in already having, like, you know, at least a decent number of money, and then you can keep multiplying it um but yeah so if you had five thousand dollars um i think it depends on the country but to move you know fiat currencies to um you know bitcoin or ethereum uh i think coinbase is probably the most popular option uh i personally don't like coinbase because uh I, I i use gemini which is another um another way because it's more like, like an exchange and they only charge you uh 0 0.4 percent mm -hmm. um and then Coinbase charges you about four percent, which is a lot higher. Um, and then if, if you if you if your country doesn't allow Coinbase or Gemini, um, I think some other options are maybe local Bitcoins. 
Yeah. So basically, local Bitcoins, it just like you, it just connects you to someone else in the world that owns Bitcoins that are willing to accept your money, like, you know, via bank wire or PayPal, and they'll yeah. give you the Bitcoin. And you know, usually they they have a rating system, and they have um, there's a um, escrow service just to ensure that you know like you'll be getting your Bitcoins. You know, so I think it's quite safe. Because yeah, when you first hear about it, it seems very very sketchy. Um, and I've never done it, but I've I've, I've heard of people that have use local bitcoins and they have no issues with it okay good yeah, yeah I've, that's good to hear that because i've been in this exact situation i'm in thailand and yeah. uh, coinbase didn't let me buy uh gemini yeah. hasn't hasn't let me buy yet um, yeah, have, you used, uh, have you used vpn and i tried vpn i tried everything so here's my funny story is back in october it was october 31st when everything was you know, if you're seeing my screen right now, it back in October, it was like down flat here. And then yeah. beginning of December, every, the whole market, every coin just went, boo, just like exploded. So I'm just like, oh my God, because I couldn't get verified. I went to all these sites, you know, they, they asked for pictures of your ID. <laughs> and I was like, I'm out here abroad and I'm just like, ah, oh, I got so frustrated. And then eventually I was just like, I was doing an all nighter and I was like, I'm not going to bed until I get in. Until I get, yeah. it was just like small amount of money that I had, like 500 bucks. I was like, I'm just going to get 500 bucks in. And Bitcoin was around like 5,000. And yeah. uh, I just couldn't get verified. And I got so frustrated. I just gave up. And then this last uh, mini dip happened around like December 22nd or whatever. And actually, no, I was going to buy on December uh, 19th when it was 18,000 on local Bitcoins. But local Bitcoins, the prices are always higher, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. So people were like offering sales price for higher. Um, and then I was like, okay, fuck that. And I tr tried to get verified on some more sites. And now it kept going down. So I was like, oh, okay. Da, da, da. Um, but anyways, yeah, here's here's those sites, guys. You got Gemini, Local Bitcoin. Anyway, links in description. I, I mean, anyways. I decided to buy cryptos again in, back in December 2016. Yeah. Um, I also had a hard time. And I think I managed to just buy like 50 bucks worth on some weird upscale website. And then in June, again, I mean, I had, I had like just horrible experiences. Like I would take a picture with my passport and then you have to, you know, have a, a piece of paper and then sign it. Like I'm using this picture just for Gemini or just the Kraken. And yeah. then, you know, you've got, you've got your passport on one hand and your, your paper on the other hand, and then you need to take a selfie, right? How do you, how do you do this? <laughs> so what yeah. I would do is I would go into bed and lay horizontally and then, you know, put the passport on my chest or something and, you know, use gravity to have them uh, yeah. on me. Yeah. So for people that don't know what we're talking about, they, it basically needs to verify your identity. So every site has a different method, like take a picture, take a selfie, just like a lot of things online these days need to verify your identity. So yeah. and I'm, it might take extra longer now because of the, the demand of people trying to get. Uh, yeah. Approved. And like, uh, for or uh, for uh gemini or, or bitrex like the trading one they're not even accepting new accounts a lot of the, this thing is a lot of sites are clogged up right now um but so yeah if you're trying to get in right now just depends what country you are do your research to figure out what site to 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 buy from and then what would you tell people like what would you tell me for example what to buy Okay, before that, first, first, yeah, it's like don't get discouraged by the, the horrible verification system. Like it's such a pain, but it's worth it at the end, you know. And you, it's just a one-time thing. Once you get verified, you're you're usually set for for life. So, uh, yeah, so that's the thing. And then yeah, in terms of the, what what to buy in the beginning, I mean, I would I would say just buy like the the coins that are you know on the, on the top ten that really have uh, that have been around a while, you know, and they they have some sort of substance. So Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, I would say Monero is a good one because it's a privacy coin. It's just you know you want to buy something that's a bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, Neo is another coin that uh, seems to be, be very good, and they're they're going to be uh, launching a lot of ICOs in the next few months. So kind of what Ethereum is doing. They have like almost thirty ICOs uh, lined up. Uh, and another one that seems interesting is uh, you know just Ripple and IOTA. Uh, a lot of people hate on Ripple just because uh, you know it's kind of like centralized. It's for banks. And uh, IOTA is, is actually not a blockchain. It's, they, they use a different technology called the Tangle. Uh, oh. But I mean, it's always good, right? You got to hedge your bets. So you know, maybe, maybe Tangle is better than blockchain. Uh -huh. um, just in case that, that's the case, you should buy a little bit of IOTA in my opinion. Wow. Very interesting. I've never even heard of that. 
Um, so the overall big picture of Bitcoin, I guess for someone that doesn't really know, um, uh, what, what gives, this is for, for, for a people, what gives Bitcoin value? What, what's the deal with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? I mean, I would say that the same thing as what gives gold value, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because there's, there's a limited amount of gold. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, people say like the gold is valuable because it's used in, you know, circuits and, you know, for astronauts or whatever. But I, like, I don't think that that justifies the price. I think it's, it's something else, you know, it's, it's not really for the use case of gold. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's one of the same thing. It's just, uh, if everyone believes in this currency, then it, it has value. Yeah. And for, so for people that don't know, there's a limited amount of Bitcoins, like based on the mathematical equation or whatever, there can never be more than X amount of Bitcoins, like 21 million. Or now they say, yeah, around that. So yeah. there's, there's basically, there's a limited amount of Bitcoins. It's an online digital currency. So that's what gives it value. It's just like gold. More can't be created out of thin air. Unlike fiat currencies, which are the, main paper currencies us dollar all the dollars around the world they're printed the federal reserve which creates the us dollar if they want to put more us dollars into circulation they press a button and they get printed actually most of us dollars are not even represented in physical paper as people like me and you know banks create us dollars simply by pressing keyboard buttons and boom money gets created out of thin air so this is kind of trying to the whole crypto revolution is trying to get out of that fiat currency paradigm and into back of a more of a gold standard paradigm where the currency that we use is it's actually a limited amounts. One institution can't just create more of it out of thin air. So hope a lot of you watching know more about that. Um, so back to this concept, um, you are, are you trading day to day. What would you say to someone like me and just an average Joe getting in? Should I put my, you know, $2,000, you know, money that I have totally on the side. Um, should I put that in and just forget about it and check back in, in a couple years or, or should I have my eye on it every month and think about if Bitcoin, uh, you know, goes up, should I think, think about, you know, trading that for some smaller altcoins or what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't recommend day trading. Uh, well, you know, they say 90% of day traders lose. And I mean, this is such a volatile market that it's just super hard emotionally as well. You know, I think it's just not worth it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're making enough money just holding them. You know, that's, that's what I would think. Yeah. You know, if you, you know, any of these coins like Monero, Ethereum, Neo, if you, held, if you had these like a year ago, you probably did 100x, you know, for any of these coins. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I would definitely recommend not day trading. Um, maybe you can rebalance your portfolio, you know, once a month. So, you know, if Monero goes up, you know, a lot more than NEO and Ethereum, now you have a lot more Monero, you know, in terms of dollar value. So you can rebalance a little bit to make sure you always have an equal amount or, you know, whatever amount you, you, you set for yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So um, do, you, do you see yourself um, holding a lot of these long-term? What, what do you see for the long-term of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies looking into like when we're our parents age, like 30 years, like the next generation, what do you see? What do you see for the, for the future? What does it look like? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell, but I mean, like some people say like, you know, by the time we have kids, like they won't even understand the, the, the concept of like paper money, you know, like there's probably a lot of concepts that we don't even, you know, for us it's foreign, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, the kids will have the same thing. Like, wait, wait, wait you use some, yeah, you used to have paper as money. Like, it makes no sense. Um, yeah, so that can definitely be the case. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think the the technology, you know, the, 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 any decentralized ledger, you know, this kind of technology, whether it be blockchain or Tangle, or, or this new one called Hashgraph. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna go anywhere. I think they'll be here for forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's not centralized. You know, the, the, no, no one can fudge the numbers. Um, no one can take your money. You know, you hear when there's corrupt governments. I forgot which country it was, but I think it, they were like filing for bankruptcy, so they just took thirty percent of everyone's money from the banks. You know, 
Yeah. Without permission, they just took it and they used the government used it uh, to to pay off debts or something. Uh, but with Bitcoin, that doesn't happen, you know. Um, oh yeah, just another thing is when, when you when you buy cryptocurrencies on these exchanges, always make sure to um, create a wallet and then put your money into the wallet. Uh, don't leave it in uh, any exchange. Um, have you done that? So my my money is still in uh in a wallet. Yeah, it's not in an exchange. I can't sign up for any of the exchanges yet. Oh, so you bought it on the local Bitcoin community? Uh, I actually bought it from a friend who. Okay. I yeah, bought it from a friend who sent Bitcoin to my wallet address. Yeah, so, so I, I, mean, that's one of the I would recommend for people that have trouble. You know, if you have an American friend, they have usually like a. Was it like a fifteen thousand limit on Coinbase or whatever? You know, so they can you can always just transfer their money and they'll buy it for you and then send it to you. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. That's so that's what I, yeah, that's what I ended up having to do because being out here in Thailand, I couldn't get signed up for any of the sites. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, the overall the overall picture to the the whole crypto space is it's it's basically the wave of the future. It makes so much sense with the security and the um, the decentralized facet of it so you know yeah. like an, an older person who maybe they're not they're not interested in in diversifying their portfolio every month they're not interested in you know flipping they're just interested in uh maybe like a diversification from their 401k or something like they got some money they want to they don't want to they want to forget about it until they're retired or whatever yeah i think this is what do, what do you think about that like the long term what would you say for someone that's like okay i got ten thousand dollars from grandma or whatever she wants to either put it into some stocks and bonds or you know a 401k or we got bitcoin or cryptos and and yeah, so I mean, we're looking at you know, we're looking at not touching it for 20 30 years yeah i mean 20 30 years was a very long time i mean I, no i think mean, no one can see the future that long but yeah i, I met one of my uh one guy in Poland is a buddy of mine. He's been in cryptocurrency full time since 2013. You know, so he, there, there, was a, there was a big wave in 2013, and then you know, so he he was he was in he was I think he even participated in the Ethereum ICO. So this is when Ethereum was you know 200 times. I think he, he it was like when it was a dollar. Big, you know, Ethereum was a dollar once at one time. And now it's you know 700 800 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but he, he says like cri cryptocurrency is kind of the, it's like the five-year retirement plan. Wow, you know? interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously diversification is important. And actually, that's, that's one of the things I love about cryptocurrency is, you know, I, I, I participate in the stock market as well, which we can discuss. But one good thing is I think they're, they're not really correlated. Uh, or may, they might even be inversely correlated, you know. So if the stock market crashes, it's very, I can, I can definitely see people moving the money into cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Uh, you know, collapses, yeah, yeah. People move into the cryptocurrencies. Absolutely. Like uh, I'm, I, I follow everything that's going on in the world. I, I know that, uh, people with, with YouTube and the internet, people are waking up to the fiat currency, how it doesn't make sense to have paper money that can be made more of. And people know about inflation. Now people know about the federal reserve whole scam system now. And yeah, I think more people are more uh, educated about that now. Yeah. Interesting. Before we were just like kind of living like like without paying attention to any of this stuff. Yeah, um, people people waking up with the the whole internet and the YouTube and the all this information we have at our fingertips and it, Bitcoin is coming. It's like oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Like a currency that you can't make more of. There's limited amount, just like gold. Uh, yeah. And That's so cool. instant, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so five year retirement plan. That's very interesting because. You know, people that are involved that I know, they say, if you buy any coin right now, it's yeah. definitely going to go up in the future, like the long term, like 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 years. It's only going to go up most likely because as more and more people realize, oh, okay, this does make a lot of sense as the US dollar continues to go down because everyone is, even the mainstream news is, is picking up on, okay, yeah, the value of the US dollar is going down as China and Russia and, and even Saudi Arabia is starting to trade oil with China in uh, Chinese yuan. Yeah. You know, get it going away from the petrodollar. You guys can Wikipedia petrodollar. Um, yeah, there's yeah, all these geopolitical things that are going on right now is 
Two, with other countries saying, wait, why is the, the US dollar the world reserve currency? Other countries are waking up to that well, and uh, getting away from the US dollar. So the US dollar is going down and down. So let's say you have all your life savings in a bank or in X you know, investment in, in US dollars, maybe it's good to think about investing in something just like gold. Gold is, is good. You know, that's probably only going to go up as, cause there's a limited supply gold, silver, but that could gold and silver can also be manipulated too. Um, as can the stock markets be manipulated, but uh, yeah, maybe getting some investments away from the U S dollar. That's what I, that's what I'm telling myself. That's what I would tell someone that I know. Cryptocurrencies can be manipulated, especially the, the coins that are very small. I mean, you know, if one person, even with the $10,000, you can move, move some of the prices of these coins. Right? So, uh, mm -hmm. So there's, yeah, you can definitely manipulate even these little coins. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's interesting you, you mentioned the, the Chinese yuan. You know, I actually met a guy in, in Chiang Mai who, uh, who actually got me into the, into the Chinese tech stocks and everything, we can, which we can discuss. But yeah, he's telling me, like, yeah, if you have any, like, just fear, just like hold the Chinese yuan. You know, it's better yeah. than the dollar. They trust it more yeah. than the dollar. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, yeah. you've been in China very recently, right? Wouldn't you just like, wouldn't you mind blowing, like, you know, people yeah, yeah. Talk, like, you know, how the USA is awesome or how Japan is awesome, you know, cause I'm, I'm half Japanese and all the people I meet in Europe are like, oh, Japan's such a futuristic country. You know, I want to go there. Blah, blah. But in my head, I'm like, you know, China is beating us. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. It's, it's, when, it's, I, when I got to, when I got to Guangzhou, uh, especially, you know, Zhujiang new town, which is basically downtown, like the new area. It's just so futuristic. It's like 10 years ago, they designed the perfect city and they just built it and it's uh, crazy clean. I think it's even like more crazy than like Singapore level. And just obviously the Canton tower, IFC tower, those are just amazingly beautiful and they're all lit up in rainbow colors and people that haven't seen, they can watch my uh, Guangzhou China vlogs. They're, they're get, They're pretty popular. People are really liking it. So yeah. Yeah. Great, I, saw your, I saw your vlog too. Yeah. The, the, the rainbow, the rainbow stuff, that looked really cool. Yeah, Rainbow Road, and then they got the Rainbow Tower. It's just, anyways, China is super futuristic, and uh, Guangzhou is only like the third biggest city, or third or fourth, or something like that. And yeah, just, and people would leave in the comments. They're like, "Thanks for making these videos." You know, the American uh, mainstream media is all you know down down about China, like uh, making them the enemy or whatever, and never showing the real, true China. They're like, "Thanks for showing this beautiful part of China." So, yeah, you know, the one interesting thing I see is like you know, everyone's trying to make it seem like, you know, the, the Chinese government is so bad because, you know, they're blocking Facebook and Google and all this censoring. Yeah, right. But, but in a way, it's like good for the country. You know, because, yeah, because it makes so much sense. It's like, duh, more countries should do that. It's, yeah. it's keeping the money in the country. Exactly. Yeah. You know, now they have these amazing companies like Alibaba and Tencent, which might not have existed, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, these are these are two of the companies that I, I definitely have a lot of money in because. Just, I think they're just going to keep getting bigger, you know? Yeah, uh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. So people can look at into that, the Alibaba. I wish I had side money to invest in like Alibaba and Tencent and stuff like that. Um, yeah. the, you know, but China is, they have billion plus people, so they can, it kind of makes more sense for them to have their own, their own Facebook, their own Google, their own X, Y, Z, their own, you know, Instagram, yeah. their own, they have their own YouTube, they have their own everything. <laughs> But for a smaller country like Thailand or something like that, it may not make sense because yeah. there's, there's benefits of being connected to the worldwide Facebook and the worldwide Google and the worldwide YouTube. There's benefits to both. But for China, I think it definitely does make sense. It's totally obvious why they do it. So, yeah, yeah I mean, people, people that think it's either. blocked because it's totalitarian, that's not why. It's because it totally just makes sense. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, you know, they say the, the most powerful person in the world is, you know, the, the president of the United States. I think it's the the Chinese guy, the Chinese is the president, right? I think he's the most powerful man in the world. I mean, because he's got like full control, and I mean, China is such a powerful country now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a big <laughs> yeah, that's dope. So you're doing uh, other sorts of uh, investing. I guess someone that's kind of new, like me. Um, what are some other things to invest in? Like, are you day trading in the stock market and what's the difference between stock market day trading and Bitcoin day trading and what are, what are the differences there? And yeah, what other stuff? 
I mean, first of all, I, I said, I, I don't do any day trading. I have kind of the, the Warren Buffett mindset of kind of value investing. So basically you find the find the, find something that's undervalued, um, you know, that has, that you think should be, should be valued at a higher price. Um, so my, you know, my friend, he's, he's been a big fan of Warren Buffett for a long time. So I met him in Chiang Mai and then he met up with me again in Poland and we went to Lithuania together as well. Uh, guys in Singapore. Um, but yeah, he, he told me, you know, these buy companies like, you know, Alibaba, he was a huge fan of Alibaba. He, he still is. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I got in at like 110 back in March and it, you know, went up to like 195 or something. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it did 70% 70, 70 or whatever in, uh, in like nine months, which is a lot better than just the uh, S and P 500, which I mean, S and P 500 is good too. You know, if you didn't, if you don't, if you want to play it super safe and you don't know what to put it in, I mean, Warren Buffett just says, just put it in the S and P 500, you know? Mm. Interesting. So, uh, okay. So Chinese stock market, that could be good. Um, any other things that part of your investment portfolio, like, I don't know, Airbnb's yeah, so, or I, I use Robinhood, the, it's just like a, like an app on your phone pretty much you can use to invest in, in uh, stocks. Yeah. And, uh, oh, why, why you gotta play that one, man? That's, that's the one where I failed. I, I'm just, I thought I would go to your Instagram page <laughs> just to get a clip in there. So people can go follow the pull up one, one arm pull up master. Anyways. Yeah. So, so um, there's two um, stocks that it's like pretty much, I think they're just kind of like an index fund, an ETF. They have like the top, you know, 50 Chinese companies, you know, and obviously like the, the weight is different on based on how big the company is. So like uh, KYEB, so KWEB. So basically it has like, you know, ten percent of ten cent, eight percent of Alibaba, five percent of Baidu. Like you know, it just keeps going down like that. But it's pretty much diversified to you know, pretty much all of Chinese techs. So, mm. if you think Chinese tech is you know gonna improve in the next ten years, which I mean, I can't imagine not. This, this is a stock you should hold on to, right? Okay, yeah. sweet, awesome. Yeah. And, this is yeah. good stuff. and I think I don't know if we talked about it last time, but you know, the people in the world that really make it are, are not employees. You know, they don't work for a wage. You know, like it's even working at Google, you know, it's like people dreams jobs. It's an amazing thing, I guess, but you're still at the end of the day, you're making, you know, 300 K maybe and that's, and you pay taxes, right? 33%. So you're making 200 K. Yeah. yeah. But the richest people in the world that are making millions, they, they don't pay income tax, right? They pay capital gains tax, which is the, the funny part. Like they pay less, the rich people pay less taxes than the, the poor people, right? The whole system, right? Um, yeah. Capital gains tax is usually like what? 10%, 15%. And then in a country like Singapore, it's zero percent. You know, so yeah, it's, the the goal is to get out of the rat race and then just you know invest, right? And that's that's like the ultimate form of, of passive income. Um, you know, it's it's better than you know drop shipping was great, um, and it's yeah it's amazing. But the, you're still dealing with uh, you're, it's not it's like it's a you know there's different levels of passive, right? So like I would say investing in stocks and cryptocurrencies is like the the ultimate form. And wow. That's why I'm such a big fan of it, you know? That's great. Cause it, cause it is very hands off, you know, there's, you don't have employees to, to manage, uh, so to yeah. speak. Um, no customers, no clients, uh, no boss. So it's, it's fantastic. That's great. That's <laughs> really great. The things you love, you know, I'm not saying you, you just invest in stocks and lay on the beach all day. I guess you'll get bored in three days, but uh, yeah. Invest in stocks and then do something you really like to do in life. You know, like start a YouTube channel like you did and start a business. You know, for me, I definitely want to, you know, start my own swim team one day. I have a few restaurant ideas I have in my head. I guess all sorts of cool things I'd, I'd like to do. Um, awesome. Yeah, so that's why I thought it was important to, to talk about this on your channel. <laughs> awesome. Totally. I need to totally talk about more uh, investing stuff. You know, you said there's different levels of passive and that's totally right because – uh, let's, you know, I started in 2013, I was knocking doors. That's zero passive. You know, you're trading your time for money. Yeah, and, I, and after yeah. I started getting into the YouTube world and like, uh, oh, the rich dad, poor dad, you know, you're never going to get rich being an employee, trading your time for money. After that clicked, I was like, okay, never going to be an employee again. I don't want to be an employee. So our goal was just to get out of the rat race, the trading time for money. That's what, that's what people call the rat race. And then, so we got into the online business. We're like, okay, we have to have an online store, like e-commerce. Let's fucking go. We were just talking about this at dinner last night. And uh, we were just like reminiscing, like we were in that apartment. 
And so anyways, we got into the e-commerce space. Now we have some sort of passive income, but this is maybe a low level of passive. It, it's very passive compared to a lot of online businesses. Like I do, I will say the Amazon FBA, uh, method, because all we have to do is, well, we don't do it anymore. We have VAs doing our daily customer service. Um, yeah. but for the last two years, it was totally us, no VAs, just me and Parker every day checking customer service. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. You know, it's very, very yeah. passive. Amazon does all the shipping and the returns and stuff like that. And then most of our time is focused on looking into other products and expanding. Um, but that's very, very passive, but I wish I had more sideline cash to put into more of these other diversified investing portfolios uh, i guess that's why i haven't been talking about it on this channel because i haven't been doing it but um definitely every entrepreneur knows that in order to be wealthy you have to have a diversified portfolio so going into the future i i always want to be involved in e-commerce selling physical products uh, i want to be inventing products and launching products but i also want to have you know, create my own digital products that create, you know, membership stuff. That's stuff that's recurring, uh, recurring income that provides value to the audience, whatever they want, make a product to, uh, to provide value there and also invest long-term in cryptocurrencies. Uh, maybe some Chinese stock market. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Google, you know, Google and Amazon are, are also pretty good. Um, actually had a, some guy was telling me yesterday about the marijuana stocks. Apparently they've done, they've made, they've made a killing, you know, with marijuana stuff. Uh, and it seems like they're, they might continue to expand. You know, I think like someone's saying Canada is planning on legalizing marijuana, you know, in the whole country in a few months. So this could, this, this could be another potential. Uh, I mean, I, I haven't done enough research um, and I have to talk to my friend about it. You know, the, you, for every, uh, yeah, for everything that I, I do, I, I always have like two other friends that are like, you know, that also are in that and that I usually try to talk to them about it, you know, like a, like a little mastermind mentorship kind of thing. Yeah, for um, sure. So yeah, I got to ask them a little bit about what they think about marijuana stocks, you know? <laughs> yeah. In Canada, I actually have heard from someone, friend of a friend that knows, yeah, Canada is going legal and there could be um, some good investing opportunities in some in some marijuana uh, stocks yeah. in Canada. I mean, so. Even in the U.S., I'm sure it's, slow, it's slowly spreading, right? Pretty much the whole West Coast is legal, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. It's it's yeah, spreading. It's so that's, that's a wave of future. So investing in that industry could be could be good. You know, one. I mean, even starting, on, I think even in starting a marijuana dispensary now is like a, it's a good business. Exactly. It's only, I'm saying if, if, if it's, you know, if, if you're passionate about something, it doesn't have to be passive, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. I, I was going to mention the, for someone that's new to my channel, I talk about the four hour work week at, all the time. It's, it's, yeah. it's about it's starting a, an online passive income business. It's, and then it's about investing, but what's the end game? You know, wh why are we, why are we alive? Why are we here? Why are we doing all this investing business stuff? It's because, so you can have use more of your time doing things that you are interested in and less of your time doing things that are a hassle to you that you're not interested in. So the goal is to have tons of time to be able to travel and do your passions, whether it's make videos, make art, make podcasts, write books. Yeah. I mean, that's I, the goal. Like I can like bet you for a fact that Tim Ferriss, Worked way more than four hours a week. You know, like you know, last year he had a book I got for Christmas. It was the uh, what was what was the book called? He had a book last year. Yeah, uh, uh, before Tribe of Mentors, it was Tools of Titans. Tools of Titans, yeah. And then yeah. this year he, he makes another book, like another thick book. Yeah. You know, just one year later, you know, there's, there's no way he's just he's chilling on a beach somewhere. He's he's hustling, and he's got his podcast, and he's got his TV show. Right? He's got this like TV show now. Yeah, exactly. And that's what people, they're like four hour work week or no one works four hours a week or that would be stupid to only work four hours a week. I'm like, it's yeah. a figure of speech. Work in the definition of the title means hassle, things that are a hassle, busy work, things that like you don't yeah. are not interesting in doing. So Tim Ferriss is, is not, basically he's not doing any work. He's, he's an invested, he's got plenty of passive income and he's doing the things that he loves, writing books, podcasts, creating content, providing value need an income anymore right i mean he's probably he probably has tens of millions of dollars he can just 
do yeah. nothing. And just retire. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's not working for someone else doing some yeah. some you know, busy work. Money for all his kids, <laughs> if he wanted to, <laughs> like he, he has no issues there. Uh, exactly. But yeah, he's doing what he loves. You know, he gets to meet all these high. You know, it's, it's, his job is really cool. He gets to talk to people who are the best at what they do, right? And you get to pick their brains. I mean, that sounds like a really fun job. Yes, uh, absolutely. Very, very fun job. That's why I was a fan of, you know, Tim Ferriss and Joe Rogan podcast. And I remember I was in our little uh, one-bedroom studio apartment with me and Parker back in 2013. And I was like, I wanted to get into podcasting. I was like, ah, one day I'm going to have a podcast. <laughs> ah. So yeah, these last uh, two years have been a whirlwind after we've got into, we've got into the investing, you know, we're, we're investors. We invest our money in physical products. We buy them cheap and sell them for double, whatever, it, whatever it is. Every, with every order, we, we close to double our money, um, which is good. And so that's my, also my goal with my YouTube money. That's in my YouTube account. Bank account is over here. And then our physical, my physical product business is over here. So with my YouTube money, I want to, use crypto to hopefully make 50%, make double, and then, you know, invest that in things, invest that in my passions. You know, I would love to invest some of those profits into hiring, uh, hiring a team for living that life, hiring a filmmaker, you know, do, do awesome shit with that. So that's, that's where my mindset is at. Take it to the next level. Take my passions to the next level because that's the point, right? Do dope shit. I'm just gonna with your money, with your time. I just, re I just remember that I did. I bought, I brought down these uh, earphones, and I didn't put them on. <laughs> Is the anyway. echo going to be an issue? No, it sounded good. I didn't hear any echo. All right, perfect. Maybe but anyways, good. it's uh, twelve twenty-seven p.m. here, and uh, we have to catch a speedboat at one. Oh, okay. All right. So but, uh, we can uh, end this, I guess. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was I good. Actually wanna, I want to recommend uh, the Warren Buffett's uh, teacher. I think he wrote the, it's something Graham, Graham. Let me, uh, let me find the name of this book, but there's like a few chapters in the book that people should read. Um, cool. Just talking about the stock market and how you should look at it, you know, especially for cryptocurrencies, it applies a lot because it's so volatile and people get so emotional, you know? Yeah. And the biggest yeah. mistake you can make is buying it when it's at the top, you know, cause you don't want to miss out and then selling it at the bottom because you're scared of losing it all, you know? Yeah. And, like if you read this book you understand like you know people are it's just it's like um the Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing yeah exactly I was I was just watching a YouTube video from an investor you know doing cryptos full-time he's like if you have to be mentally prepared to get in you have to be mentally prepared when it goes down you have to be mentally prepared to get through that hold on through it you know yeah yeah don't get down on yourself because it's it, yeah that's why I would even recommend not you know like I mean obviously I I don't take my own advice, but you should just buy it and then forget it. You know, like that would be yeah. the best. Yeah. And maybe look at it once every few months. Um, but anyways, the book is called uh, the intelligent investor. Awesome. I think Thank it was, you. I think it was like chapter nine and chapter 20. I think chapter 20 was like the good one, uh, the good chapter to really explain all this. Awesome. And then another, uh, maybe my friend has a YouTube channel for cryptocurrencies. You know, I, I watch all those videos and it might be a good start for people. Um, he's a guy I met in Poland. He lives in Arizona but he travels a lot too. Uh, his, his YouTube channel is called uh, Tommy World Power. Um, I'm sure you'll put that on the, the bottom of your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything in the description. Also check the uh, article right up on everything that we talked about, about passive investing that uh, Remy uh, has. And uh, yeah, everything in the description. But I think that was great. Let me know in the comments of this video, guys, uh, what your experiences is, are, what your tips are um, involved in investing and, and cryptocurrencies especially. For me, I'm getting in. I'm looking forward to investing long term, like just having a, a good – because this is pretty early. Like this is still the, the very beginning. This is yeah, still I mean, the very beginning. You know, some people don't even like it's Bitcoin is just now becoming a household name. This is still the very beginning. So I don't care if it's 20,000 or 15,000. It's, I don't care if it's 30,000, 50,000. It's still a great time to get in. It's still really early. So if you're watching this and you're like, whoa, okay, this is, if you got, if you need, if you have cash and you want to invest it in something 10 year, five year, it's definitely going to be, way more 
up. It's only getting more popular, this cryptos. The future is only getting more real. The future is only getting more technologically advanced. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, if you compare it to gold, the, 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 the total value of, of Bitcoin is, is like, you know, one fiftieth of the total value of gold, right? So it's, we're not even close. And if you compare it to, you know, even the, the peak of the tech bubble, you know, people are calling crypto a bubble. You know, it's not even close and you're not even you know, putting into account the inflation since the tech bubble and how much easier it is for people to buy, you know, cryptocurrencies as opposed to buying, you know, tech stock. The barrier to entry is much lower than it was for the, the tech, tech stocks back then. So, yeah, yeah this, it can easily grow, you know, 20, 30 X from here. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Could be, you know, it could be, it could be, a hundred, <laughs> could be like less. It could be a hundred X like yeah. in the future. I guess I'll, let's end on this question. Do you, in the future, do you see Bitcoin being uh, more like gold where it's just kind of a, that's where you hold value or do you see it being like a day-to-day -day transaction? I'm buying a beer with Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, it's, so for me, it's, it's just hard to tell, right? If they can improve their tech and, and you know, increase the transaction throughput and the, the lower the fees, then yeah, I guess it can be used as more like normal currencies. Um, but for now, it seems like it's more of a store of value because it's just taking, you know, it costs $10 just to send a little bit of uh, Bitcoin over and then, you know, you have to wait a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, but, there's, you know, there's many, there's many different thoughts. People that have gotten to cryptocurrencies before all the altcoins came, they're all like Bitcoin maximalists. They think Bitcoin is the only true coin. And then, you know, there are people like my friend uh, who got in 2013. Um, and, you know, a lot of people that got in around then, they all believe that, you know, Bitcoin is, is you know, in 10 years, it's not even going to be a top 10 coin. And there's going to be other coins. Other, like, other ones will come out and be faster, better. And, yeah, just, just be uh, improved. Like, you know, they think NEO and Ethereum would be, like, coins that, are, that will, you know, overtake Bitcoin. Awesome. But yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, and, there's, and now there's Bitcoin Cash, too. You know, a lot of people are, are thinking Bitcoin Cash is a true Bitcoin because it uh, fulfills the the view of the white paper that you know the satoshi nakamoto wrote because he wanted bitcoin to be a you know a, a, a cash based system yeah, where it's fast transactions right, right, right. which is kind of what bitcoin cash has um yeah i, I don't know how much longer you want to talk because you, you said you got to go right yeah that's but, it yeah. i think that's a good place All to right. end it, the future it could be a, a combination of different coins yeah. How, yeah how about this if uh if, if, if people have any questions in the, in the comments, I can look, in, look at it and then maybe try to answer some of them in the blog post. Yeah, awesome. Cool, yeah. You can okay. uh, do updates to the blog post with all the questions. That's a great idea. Leave your questions below. Thanks for being on, man. I'll probably see you, when right. I see you around the world someday, sometime yeah, again. Yeah, good talking to you. All right, man. All right. That was dope. Bye-bye. Peace.